Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do an official review of the Blick Studio brush markers. Don't confuse these with the old school Blick markers with a bullet and chisel nib. These are not the same whatsoever. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did a live stream where I was swatching these and um, just kind of a first impressions type of thing. But as always, anytime I have a swatching and first impressions, I will have an official review. So do keep an eye out for those. Do not assume my swatching is the review. <laughs> I need to play around with it, research it, get some info. Um... Today, I am just focusing on the Blix. However, I will be doing a video shortly after this doing a Blick versus Copic. And the reason for that is Blick right now is the closest thing to a Copic competitor we have on the market. Um, well, basically, yeah, <laughs> they're really close. Um, so let's kind of go over some basics real quick and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. So I do have the box set, the largest set you can buy, which is the 144 markers. I'm not going to say colors because here's the issue. There are not 144 colors. There's actually 142 because they give you two colorless blenders. So that is something to keep in mind for sure. Okay. Right now, while I have the wide angle, <laughs> when you open the box, you actually have this huge foam pad, super thick. I mean, it's as wide as my finger that's sitting on top of these, which means good packaging. They're already arranged like so. You can actually put this box on its side and pull from it. On the inner lid, you have all of the color numbers and names and whatnot so that you can kind of figure out where to put them. Here are those two colorless blenders I'm talking about. So, I have been playing around with these. I've been swatching them, making color combos. I have colored two pages, um, and I kind of want to get into those details shortly. But yeah, here is the Blick Studio brush marker. So, you have your chisel end, Nice standard chisel size. Then you have your brush end. Now, unlike Copic, where usually the line indicates the brush, they have a line here, but that's for the chisel end. So it really screws me up every single time. <laughs> they have like these nifty little grips right here. And as you can see, it's like a, what, octagon? Hexagon? I don't know, one of those shapes. So it's not going to roll off your desk. The Copic is more oval. Um, the caps come off very easily. I have had no issues with that whatsoever. In fact, in some cases, they feel too easy. But they also have, back here, the barcode. Because these are sold open stock. Now you'll have a number and a name on the tip of each one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this off to the side kind of zoom us in so we can talk about this a little more. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about one gripe I have, two gripes actually. The first gripe being Blick advertises these as 144 colors, but in reality you get two colorless blenders, so you're really only getting a max of 142 colors. They need to fix that on their packaging, <laughs> not gonna lie. The other thing is, so for the longest time after getting these, I was trying to figure out what this number was. Let me zoom in so it's more clear. This number here. I was like, I'm going to crack this code and figure it out. But nothing was making sense. Um, let me pull some other greens, for example. So here's some more greens. Just so you can get an idea. Oops, make sure I'm on camera. Okay, so see how it's just kind of jumping all over the map? At first I was like, okay, well maybe they are working out some sort of system and skipping some numbers because there are only 142 colors. Maybe they plan to expand to the 358 that Copic have. Well, I couldn't figure out the numbering system and I especially noticed this with the blues. Um, blues, for example, 
Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I grab the right ones. Blues, for example, we go from 531 to 008. <laughs> So I was like, okay, is this a blending family? What's this group number? So I was like seriously killing myself for an entire weekend on this. I reached out to Blick, and guess what, guys? This number means nothing. Literally nothing. I was so frustrated that I spent all that time, but I even asked the guy multiple times, so you mean to tell me this number means nothing? And he said yes. And then he also followed up with... The most comprehensive numbering system out there is Copic. It's like, yeah, no kidding. Not something you should advertise. So this number they claim is for internal inventory. Why is it here? Put it on the barcode and call it a day. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about that real fast because, well, that was quite frustrating. Um, a very fun weekend spent trying to figure that out unsuccessfully. Okay, notice how I put 142. I was really salty about that. So my colorless blenders I swatched here, but here are the colors. So I just did a quick swatch on some 9x12 Arteza marker paper, and this was because instantly looking at them, I noticed they were not in color family order. Um, the only thing that really is in order when you receive these are the grays. So when they start with the bright the basic grays all the way down, perfect. Cool grays all the way down, perfect. Warm grays all the way down. That was the only thing that made sense. Everything else is kind of all over the map. Um, I mean, look, we have this dark green hanging out way up here when the other greens are over here. Um, these blues are not in color family order. None of the pinks are. Um, so it did get a little frustrating. Uh, I've been slowly working on putting them in color family order. Now, right now I'm going to tell you uh, there are some rumors that these are in, because how they're packaged in sets of three, those three markers are blending orders. That's not true, because the first set of three in your box is bright green and two colorless blenders. How is that a blending family? <laughs> <laughs> the next set is apple, spring, and lime right here. This apple is very, very close. Let me zoom you guys in. This apple is incredibly close to spring. Very minor differences. Okay, so say we're going off the next three, then dark olive leaf and chartreuse. Now these three could totally blend together for sure. But I mean, again, those are so close to one another, you're not really leaping very far. We have some others where it also is just makes no sense, um, like this one here. True Blue, Bright Blue, and Sorrento, all in the same. This is supposedly a blending order. So I guess I'm bouncing from this blue to a darker blue back to this blue, and these two are very close to one another, like freakishly close. Um, and that was another thing I had noticed, is after these had evaporated, you know, because when markers are wet, you can't really judge the color, I noticed that a lot of these colors were really close to one another. They seemed very balanced while wet, and once they evaporated, I was like, well, a lot of these are close, and I think they could have possibly swapped some. I mean, the sage, green tea, Green tea. Green tea and cherimoya are all very close to one another. Um, like I said, some of these blues are awfully close. I mean, Horizon and Morning Dew up here are really close to one another. Uh, so it's kind of iffy. And then these two purples look very close to one another. They are slightly different. This one has a little more pinkish to it. But still, that's very close. Um, these very neutral colors, which you can use for a lighter skin tone or what have you, become very close to one another as well. Like see the white gardenia, how, you know, the white it is. <laughs> Vanilla is awfully close. Vanilla is more cream where this has a little pink. Uh, rose petal, you can barely even see. It's the lightest pink I've ever seen. Um, and then you have like shell here, um, and then be uh, beach, 
is also pretty light. And then down here we have some more. So Peach Blush, Dogwood, and Shortbread are all very close to one another. When we get into our yellows, um, these don't overlap a ton, but I mean, some of these are just, they could have been swapped out. Um, so yeah, as these dried, I was like, okay, a lot of these are way too close. I mean, even this tangerine and apricot are very close to one another. So I did notice that off the bat and I was a little bit concerned um, because when I went to color with them, I was like, okay, I do have a great selection of colors. Don't get me wrong. This color array is beautiful. I love all these grays, actually. I love all the natural, you know, browns. I love the blues. The greens, I honestly feel they could have done better with the greens. Um, and then I do enjoy these blues. I love all these pinks. They have some very vintage -y colors, too, like this uh, rose smoke color here, lavender pink gray lavender, the cherry blossom, this dusty rose. I love them all. Um, you know, I do like these, these yellows and oranges and all that. It's just they kind of, they didn't, this is the problem with all these brands that try to compete with Copic. They don't release as many markers because who would do that off the bat? I don't blame them. But then the color choices they come out with it's like hit or miss. So you have Arteza, for example. They have an actual numbering system and it makes sense. They have things in blending order. Groovy. Thank you. This one is released in the most random of orders and I've had multiple people tell me these are in blending orders in sets of three. They're not. And to dispel that, I'm actually going to start pulling sets of three just to show you guys how these are, in fact, not workable. Um, some are. Yes, some are. Like this set here, Brick Red, Red, and Spice. Great blending order. But then suddenly we have these three here. That's a blending order of what? Um, okay. So that's why I'm going to pull some out and show you where some of that theory works, but then it doesn't. And like I said, the biggest one is this bright green is hanging out with two colorless blenders. So how is that a blending order? Um, if you just say, okay, the sets of three aren't a blending order, you still have some problems here. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not seeing a definitive blending order. Why is this dark green just lonely up here in the corner? Uh, these blues, that's not a blending order. Now, this one, you could probably pull off, these three here. But, I mean, like I said, you're bouncing from here to here to here. Why is that a blending order? So, that's kind of my point. That theory is not accurate whatsoever. Um, so, that is definitely something to keep in mind. So, I'm going to grab my marker pad and a couple, three sets, um, just so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm just using one of my 9 by 12 marker sheets. It's from the Arteza brand. It's actually great paper. However, um, I tend to use my hammer mill more, but it's great for swatching purposes. So I'm going to grab some of these three sets. Okay, and I'm just pulling at random. And I'm going to keep them in order because that's the supposed thing. So, one of the three sets from the box is Celadon Green, Teal Green, and Dark Green. Again, these numbers don't mean anything. Now, Celadon is the lightest color. So, we'll just blend light to dark, I guess, this round. Got to make sure I have these in order because, again, I always see the the double knob here and I think, oh, that's the brush end and then it's the chisel. But I'm going to show you how this doesn't necessarily prove correct. So first things first, we want to lay down a nice little layer here. I'm just going to leave the lids off. And the reason I'm putting down my lightest color First is that's just the best way to go about it. I 
I actually really suck at blending my <laughs> light to dark. <laughs> okay, so that is the supposed um, blending order using those three. It doesn't look awful, but it doesn't look right either. Um, of course, let's let it dry. So let me grab another set. Um, let's just pull at random. Like I said, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt, so I'm making sure these are in order, though. So, Willow, uh, Horizon, and Azure. Okay, so this set has you going from a dark to a light to a medium blue. Again, I'm going by the theory that people keep saying is if you pull them out in the three-pack sets, that they're because they're in these awkward like little three sets of rows, that's a blending order. Let's find out. Okay, with this one, I'm just going to actually go dark to light, and I'll take a couple more layers, but it's easier for me <laughs> to track what I'm doing here. See, this doesn't even blend. Even if I were to lay the light one down, <laughs> this is not going to blend. It's like this is my middle color. Now this middle one blends really beautifully into this one, the color here, but it's just not gonna blend out. Now, if I swap the order and make the lighter one at the end, not the order it comes in, by the way, I'm just gonna put down a coat. I do want you guys to see something though. See how it's getting kind of streaky? My brush is not releasing a ton of ink. I started to notice that as I was coloring with these. Now these ones are very juicy, but my lighter colors, I've started to notice some issues with the lighter colors, which I'll get into a little bit later. I'm just trying to make these blend at this point. <laughs> force it on them. Try to blend out that little layer there. Okay, there. Now, if I were to blend them by swapping the order, they're better, but that wasn't the order they came in. So keep that in mind. All right, let's grab another one. So yeah, swap it, it works. Do it in the order it came. Uh, no. Let me zoom you back out. Okay, let me grab one that... Oh, this one. Okay, salmon, coral, and peach. Okay. So here we have another one. This is the order that it comes in the three-pack. Salmon, pink, coral, pink, and peach blush. So let me get these all in order. I'm going to start with my lightest color on this one because this is a very light color. Again, with these lighter colors, I'm noticing a lot of streaks. Almost, They almost feel dry. That's what I've noticed. But see how this middle color that I'm supposed to be blending in is way darker. Now, can you make this work? Sure. Lots of layers and experience. You have to know what you're doing with your markers to make this, this blend work out. <laughs> and even then, that's kind of questionable. I'm just trying to get this darn one to blend in. Let's see if I kind of go over it a little more. Okay, so that's the order it came in, and it just looks, well, stupid. I'm going to swap the dark color. See, I'm getting my streaks again. It's almost like these are drying out. See how it's just streaking up? Okay, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to swap the order. And 
and see if I can make this blend work out a little better for us. It should work better now that I've swapped the order. And I mean, you can keep layering. If you're blending alcohol markers, you need to work while they're wet. Um, so blending and layering are pretty different from the mark uh, marker world. If you're layering, you don't have to work quickly while they're wet. If you are blending, you most definitely need to work quickly to get those seamless blends. Um, but yeah, if you're just go to going to layer on top, no biggie. So when I swapped the order, it looked better, but this is the order it came in, which makes no sense. Same thing with this one here. Swap the order. Okay, that works, you know. Uh, let's see if we can find one. I swear. Um, this will probably be like the last one I do. I'm just trying to prove a point. <laughs> Stone, antique, white, and putty. Okay. All right, so this is the order these ones come in. Stone, antique, white, and putty. Now, to save my ink, <laughs> I'm gonna swatch them out so you can just see the order I'm supposedly supposed to do this in. I mean, these aren't even anywhere close to one another in a blending family world. And then that. <laughs> so, I'm going to swap these, and I think I'm going to try and put this one at the top. So I'm going to take my lightest color. I have a dog hair there. But I mean, these aren't even the same color family. Um, okay, swap that one, swap that one. I had to remember what I was swapping. Yeah, maybe I should have put that one up front. Hindsight is 2020. Yeah, I think I need to swap this order again. Let's try that once more. But as you can see, this light color is pretty streaky again. Um, okay. That one's that. Okay, so we want this one as our darker color. Now, the nice thing with marker paper is it does stay wet so that you can sit here and blend and manipulate it. See, and one thing I do like about the Blix is they blend out really well as long as they stay wet. I mean, you can buff out some serious lines that you've created, and I appreciate that. But I mean, this one is the most hideous thing I've ever colored. <laughs> Look at that blend. <laughs> it's just wrong in so many ways. So yeah, I had to swap the order to make it work. Um... So that's why I'm kind of like, if this is meant to be, if, you, if you're meant to pull out three and they should be blendable, then they should be in order. I shouldn't have to swap. I had to swap, 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 swap twice, actually. And even then, that, what is that? It's just not a cool color combo. They're all like this. Again, the only ones that make sense are the grays. Those are definitely an order that makes sense. I mean, look at this three set here. Car uh, camel, latte, tan. I would need to swap this and probably throw down the tan, camel, and then the latte. But even then, this is not going to make anything pretty. Um, this is the one we had done, the putty, antique white, and uh, stone. That was these three here. Didn't look very good. I mean, so you see my problem here? It's just like, I I don't see what they're going for with this order, which is why I am slowly working on putting these in color family order. And when my darling friend Ryan is back, this is actually a project we'll be doing together. Um, so we will be putting these in order for you guys. Okay. So you get the gist on that. I think we've covered it. Now let's talk performance, coloring-wise. So um, I did a picture from Hannah Lynn, Victorian Darlings. I did copy it out on Hammer Mill. I really like the Hammer Mill paper for markers. Um, it's thicker, so you need a hardy printer. But it just, it 
it's honestly like express it blending card paper it's nuts um this one I kind of got lazy with and didn't even bother to do the chalkboard I I honestly just started to get frustrated so this was an instance where I took a pink combo of a three pack and tried to make it work and see how splotchy and weird but also I was getting a lot of issues with the ink output almost as if the marker was drying out like the tip of the marker was white the ink just wasn't flowing so when I flipped it over to the chisel end I got more color but I also noticed the color was slightly different coming out with that chisel end, most likely because it was more or was juicier, so it just looked darker. Because once it evaporated, even with her skin, I had the same problem. I had taken a lighter color and it was streaking, so I had to flip it to the chisel end. So these I've been storing horizontally. Um, some companies claim you don't have to, but I always have for even distribution, um, even though the box kind of almost makes you have to store them uh, vertical. I've been storing it on its side, but yeah, I've noticed a lot of my brush ends are not getting their ink. Um, and I, when I put them in the box, I purposely store them brush end down because I use that more often than not. That's it. So the pink blend that I tested was hideous, but whatever. Um, her skin turned out all right. I was just playing around with the very light skin colors, um, pale skin tones, I guess. Uh, I was using two different greens on the chalkboard, um, just two blends on these bricks. They turned out okay, too. This one was honestly, I started to get <clears throat> a little frustrated after the dress and gave up. So let me show you one where I Put a little more effort into it okay from enchanted halloween by hannah lynn as well we have this adorable one i actually colored this last year in pencils this one i did with the blick studio brush markers um i had a lot of fun with the black hair i used black and a couple of the cool grays and they did awesome i used three different greens up here in the trees practicing multiple layering techniques um first doing a coat of the lightest color and doing the others in other instances i just you know stippled the color in um her dress i used three different colors I used like a mer I think it was merlot and some light pinks and they blended out really well um blue I only used two blues and the trees I think I stuck to like two browns just playing around with it um and it worked pretty well for the most part I was happier with this one than the last one but I did have the same problem especially with these light colors and I've noticed it mostly with the pale tones or the very light pinks very light all that um that's where i started to see issues is the very light colors almost feel dry like i was showing you while i was mixing they get really hard to work with and so her skin got blotchy and i don't know if it's showing very well but i got some blotchy spots because i couldn't blend it fast enough let me see if i zoom in I don't know if you'll be able to see the line, but there's a line here where it was not blending out because my pale tone was dr practically dry. Now these are brand new, so I shouldn't be having to refill them. But like I said, if I swipped, swapped a chisel, I've got plenty of ink flow. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but like you can see it possibly here in her skin, there's some spots. Uh, it did snag the black from her hair and it kind of brought it into some of my picture so the black hadn't dried <laughs> but overall you know it wasn't awful but it wasn't great either um so that's something to keep in mind but you know these weren't bad and again i'm still playing around with them um i do feel the color selection could do better when it comes to um, skin tones, whether it be more of an ethnic skin tone or a Caucasian skin tone. I do feel the colors are not as vast um, in the 142 colors. <laughs> so let's talk pricing now. Um, 
because that's a big deal, right? This is the closest thing we have to a Copic competitor. Because as of right now, you can buy these. Um, they have a variety of sets online. You don't have to buy the huge box. Uh, they kind of have those themed sets similar to how Copic set them out. Um, you can also buy them open stock. You can refill them and you can replace your brush nibs and your chisel nibs. So that's very competitive to Copic because most other brands out there don't have the refills and replacements nor there are a few out there that do but they're not as easily accessible and performance wise not so much now this brush nib is supposed to be the same material as a copic nib i will tell you right now i still feel the copic nib feels different um this nib is still great it's bendy you can flick um i get great let me get my pad back out and let me get a color you can see I have great control though over it. I mean, I can press hard and flick, press hard and flick. You know, I can do very light lines, um, you know, so you can stay in those small little corners or I can do big luscious lines. Um, chisel is very stiff, but that's okay. I, I kind of prefer it to be stiff, but like here's the tip. Here's if I change it that way, you know, go lighter. So, I mean, you have a lot going on there. So, but for some reason, I just feel like the Copic nib distributes the color better. And I still feel like I have more control. All right. How much does this box set cost that I bought? Uh, this set of 142. <laughs> I'm never going to like that go blick. <laughs> um... This is a hundred or three hundred and forty-five dollars for this, so that comes out to about two thirty-nine, two forty a marker. Um, obviously, way cheaper than Copic Sketch. Um, sort of. Uh, you know, I mean, they don't have the same color range, and when you consider this range of colors, I will tell you right now, I wouldn't buy the three hundred and forty-five dollars set. Um, instead, I would probably buy some of their themed sets. So they have some options. Um, they have their six packs, similar to how Copic does it. So you can get the assorted colors, blue colors, floral colors, gray, green. And those six packs are $15.24. Now they also have 12 packs that come in assorted colors, portrait colors, and those ones are $17.14. Now, for that, it makes a lot more sense to buy those than the set of six because only for like less than $2 more, you just got six more markers. So the pricing is kind of wonky. Um, then you can get one set of 24 right now, which is the assorted colors, and that price tag jumps to $75.23 when you double up. Uh, again, you can get a 12 set for $17.14, but then you get the assorted 24 count set, and suddenly you're at $75. So the pricing, I, I don't know what they're doing here. Uh, then you have the 48 count set, also assorted colors. That jumps to 135.27. Then you can get the 96 set of assorted colors that has 230, which costs 230 dollars and 22 cents. I would recommend buying these 12 count sets, the assorted and portrait colors. Um, they have a good range of colors, and you're getting a great deal on those um until Blick catches on and changes that and then you can supplement open stock if you would like okay so open stock if i wanted to just go buy one marker in one color it is three dollars and 67 cents now blick has their bulk pricing <sighs> I'm trying to wrap my head around why there is bulk pricing for these because the only, I mean, I guess you could buy them for resale. I mean, there's no reason I would buy six of these. So their bulk pricing is like this. 
A single Blick Studio brush marker is $3.67. However, if I were to buy six, now this um, can be mix and matched also, keep that in mind. Uh, if I buy six, I can get them for $3.30. And if I buy 12, it comes down to $3.14. So as long as you can mix and match your way through, the deal is pretty good. But it's kind of like, well, what set should I buy? And then what should I supplement with, you know? So these are refillable. The refills are $7.11. However, I know that sounds pricey. You get 0.85 fluid ounces. That's almost double the size of a Copic refill, by the way. So that's actually not too shabby. Um, now, I don't know how much ink these hold because I have yet to refill one. So I don't know how many refills you would actually get. Blick does say on their site, but I don't ever trust that. <laughs> so I may come back down the road after I've emptied one of these and refill it and let you know how many refills I get. And I'm actually tempted to drain one of these and just keep refilling it and drain it and refill it to see how many refills I can get out of a single one. And that'll be just its own little fun experiment video down the road. <laughs> but so we have that covered. Now, replacement nibs. For the brush nibs, you can only buy these in three packs, by the way. It is $5.71 for a three pack of brush nibs or $2.73 for a three pack of your chisel nib. So keep that in mind. Um, obviously, these are meant to be invested in and last forever, kind of like a Copic. The only thing is they don't have the multiple options. Copic actually has extra options um, for brush tips that will fit in your sketch markers and your chows, whereas they only have one brush here, so you can't customize it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. They may come out with it later, though. This is new to Blick, guys, so don't count that out of the running. Um, but yeah, so pricing-wise, they're not bad. Now, open stock consideration, $3.67 if I buy one. Um, if I want to go buy a Copic sketch, I do have my one place where I can get them for $4 a piece. So it's like 30-something cents more and I can grab a Copic sketch. Uh, granted, the company I use for those doesn't always have every color, so if I were to buy them at Blick, it'd be $5.85 per um, Copic sketch. Or there's always the option of Copic Chow, which is $3.90, and that has a smaller well and, you know, a few different features, and I will be doing a comparison video, but that's something to consider as well. Now, here's the big other drawback. Like I said, I have a supplier that I can get Copic Sketch cheaper. You can buy Copic Sketch and their refills. You can shop around and find deals. Blick Studio brush markers are sold by Blick. <laughs> so you are limited and you are at the mercy of Blick. Now, will Blick coupons apply because they don't have the same restrictions with manufacturers? I don't know. I haven't seen any coupons or sales apply to them yet, but that doesn't mean they won't have them. Um, so that could be one of the bonuses to them being a Blick product. Also, because it is a Blick product, Blick is going to take your feedback. Copic does not give a crap about anything we say. <laughs> and... We all still buy them, so they win. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, but Blick would be more open to feedback. Um, I have actually sent a long list of feedback <laughs> to Blick. <laughs> Hi, Blick. Um, letting them know, one, just get rid of the number. Stop toying with me. Um, I would love it if, if Blick would revamp these a little and come out with a numbering system. Um, the Artezas. Even though they're a one and done, they have a comprehensive numbering system by color family, blending order, and all that so that you don't actually have to look at your color chart. You can just pull and know it's going to blend. Copic by far has one of the best. You technically should never even have to look at a swatch chart of Copics. You will know from that Copic color code what you can pull, what will blend, and what you're going to get. 
So I really hope Blick fixes that because for a company that wants to compete with Copic, they do still have some work. They've got to fix the numbering system. They've got to fix this color range. Um, the color range is great. There's balance, tons of color options, beautiful colors they have chosen. Works great for portraits, grayscale work, landscapes, you name it. They've got it here. But some of these could have been swapped for a better option in my opinion. Now, I don't know if they plan to expand further. Um, if they're calling it quits at 142, I kind of feel like Blick is going to fizzle out and not be a good competitor. If they keep expanding and getting that color range of the Copic, then they are definitely going to be more competitive because they do have refills that are affordable. They have replacement nibs that are very affordable. Their refills are copious, 0.85 fluid ounces. Um, the Copic refill, by the way, is 0.4 ounces. And a Copic refill for the colors is 539 per 0.4 ounces, whereas you are getting double that for $7.11. So under two bucks more for your refills. Um, same thing with the nibs. The nibs are a lot cheaper, so that's something to keep in mind. Open stock pricing, like I said, you can technically get a chow and a sketch for pretty competitive price there. So when it comes to that, that's where Blick is kind of going to struggle. Uh, but if they continue to build this color line and keep it affordable, they have potential. They really do, and I don't dislike them. I just really want them to fix some things. So to recap before I take off, um, pros, tons of colors, beautiful colors. Um, in fact, some of these are quite unique colors. Other pros, replaceable nibs on both ends, um, refillable and available. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to get your hands on those refills for Copic lately. <laughs> Uh, great open stock price, uh, great that you can bulk discount as well. Um, I do like that they come in different packs, and like I said, you know, you can buy those 12 count packs and then just start buying open stock. And if you buy them in sets or you know, mix and match 12, then you get it down to three dollars and 14 cents in open stock. Um, the nib is still very flexible, they do blend very well when you you know, put them in the right order. Uh, and they and they work quite well when you color with them. Um, now, the cons. A lot of my pale colors are very streaky and almost dry. Uh, the color range, while great, is not as balanced as I would hope, um, especially with some of those colors that are too close for one another. The numbering system needs some serious reworking. The, the idea that these are in a blendable order also needs to be fixed. Um, and honestly, just put them in color family order and make a color wheel. Arteza did it. <laughs> you know, uh, Copic has their little chart, and then you can also buy hex charts, not buy Copic. But, I mean, at least come out with a hex chart, Lick. Give us something to put these in order. Something to help us kind of you know, figure out how these are supposed to blend because as of right now, I have to eyeball this and make my own color family chart because this code means nothing. Uh, whereas with Copic and Arteza, the code means something and I can make my own color family chart based on that code. They have nothing. I got to do this on my own. That's why I'm waiting for Ryan to help me because <laughs> I don't want to, except the grays. I don't get it. Why, why are these in order and everything else is wee? And then, yeah, if we're going to claim this is a blending order, then let's put them in the right blending order. So if I pull out a set of three, in order, those three should blend. I should not have to turn around and mix them to get an, a blend. And then I don't even know what that is supposed to be. Um, so that's the other thing. But those are the pros and cons. Um, would I refill these? Yes. Would I buy them again? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't buy the 142 pack that claims to be 144, <laughs> but 
Um, <clears throat> I would buy them again for sure. However, if you want my honest advice, and this is the these are the ones that I'm going to uh, recommend. If you want to buy these and try these out, get those 12 packs. So get the 12 count assorted colors and the 12 count portrait colors. $17.14 each. That gives you 24 markers cheaper than it would cost to buy the 24 assorted count set. Again, I don't understand the pricing because their 24 count assorted set skyrockets to 75 bucks. Whereas if I buy these two 12 count sets at 17 bucks, that's not even close. So uh, another thing is they really need to relook at the pricing. And then from there, I would honestly buy either open stock or maybe snatch up some of the six packs, but I feel like the bigger packs are more expensive and then you're gonna get stuck with colors like this that you don't really need. Um, you could take a look, find your own blending order and just start picking up like, you know, sets that would work in a, a blending order and just buy 12 of them so you get them for $3.14. And yes, in the big pack, you're getting them for $2.39 or $2.40. But I would rather eat that and get the colors I really want at $3.14 and just buy 12 of them. Like 12 mix and match. So that's what I would recommend. Grab those two 12 count packs because the pricing is just broken. <laughs> and until they fix it, take advantage. And then open stock the way, you know, to supplement. And I think you would enjoy these very, very much. Now, I will be doing a video uh, shortly after I finish this one up doing a competition because this is supposed to be the Copic competitor of the year. So I'm going to compare these to the Copic sketch and the Copic chow and we will see how it goes down. But thank you guys so much for hanging out and checking out the Blick Studio brush markers. If you have these, let me know your thoughts. Um, I always love to hear you guys' opinions. And then, of course, uh, you know, let me know if you have a favorite Blick color. Um, if you've noticed the issue with the lighter colors, I'd love to hear it. And then also, let myself and my subscribers know in the comments below, if you've bought any of these smaller packs, if you felt the colors were a lot better and more balanced as well. Um, because I would love to hear your suggestions on which pack to buy. I just... Personally, as of right now, I would not buy the large set. Um, I feel I'm paying too much for two colorless blenders to be tossed in there, whereas I could save some money and buy those other packs and then just supplement open stock. But I'd love to hear your guys' opinions if you own these, you've tried them, and your thoughts. So yeah, guys, um, until next time, take care.